Today is going to be a different kind of video. I'm actually going to answer a question that I received in relation to my studio tour video that I released a few weeks ago. I'm going to leave the link on top and down below if you want to check it out. But the question goes like this. Would you do a video on how you record your tutorials too? Interested in how you get your lighting and sound so good? First of all, thank you. I'm very happy that you, you enjoyed the looks and the sound of my YouTube videos. So what I'm going to do to answer your question, I'm going to show you how I film and edit my YouTube videos. Hey, what's going on? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Now, before we jump in, I just want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. More on that later. But now let me answer this question. Uh, so first, what I'm going to do here is to uh, to show you the setup that I have, like the camera, the microphones that I use, depending on uh, which type of video I'm filming. And I'm also going to show you the software I work with uh, to screen capture my computer screen when uh, shooting a video and also my video editing software that I work with all the time. So let's jump right in and start with my basic setup when I film my videos with this scene, you know, with that background and, you know, uh, the kind of angle that you are watching at this moment. So the setup that I have is not too complicated. It's a simple tripod that is right on my studio desk. And I have the, uh, the camera, like my main camera attached to it right on top, which is the Sony A7C. It's a full frame camera, very light. It actually came out last October, 2020. Very good camera, I love the quality of the image. And as far as the lens goes, cause this is an important part of my setup. I work with the Sony G lens 20 millimeters, which is a wind angle prime lens. I love this lens. It gives me a very nice depth of field. It goes down to 1.8 as far as the aperture goes. And it just looks very nice. If I get back to the camera, something that I like a lot about this camera also that I didn't mention is the autofocus. And this is why I decided to go with a Sony camera. The autofocus on Sony cameras are known to be very good. So if I take this little remote here and I just point that out straight on the camera, there you go it focuses right away and then it gets back to my face, which is great. So for me, it's very easy just to, especially when I review a product and stuff, it's so easy to work with. And the reason why I enjoy this camera is the fact that it's a full frame camera, so it performs way better in low light, which is perfect for my needs. So this is my main camera when I film YouTube videos. As far as the lighting goes, I have two main lights. My key light is right here on top facing down. And I also have like a top light. Though those are two small square lights by newer, very cheap, very affordable. And on top of the light, I added soft boxes just to uh, to smooth out the light uh, that reflects on my face, uh, which gives me a, a more balanced lighting on my face, you know, and I kind of like that. So uh, this is basically the setup with some, of course, I have like stands and stuff, you know, to uh, uh, to hold them up. And then for the background, you know, I have like colored lights that are shooting straight on the walls. And I kind of like that blue tone that I get also, and to get a more of a contrast, I have those little lights here um, that will give me a more warm uh, color, you know, and this is going to actually contrast with what I get in the background because blue is more of a cold color and these lights are more warm. So it gives me a very nice uh, contrast for the background. And, uh, you know, with the, <laughs> the, the depth of field that I get with the lens, it actually gives me a very nice blurry effect. And with the colors, I kind of like the look that it gives me. And the tripod holding my camera on my desk is also by newer. And when I'm actually vlogging, I like to use a a tripod for vlogging. And this one is called the switch pod, which is very practical. You can actually, you know, put it down on the desk right away and uh, fold it on and continue vlogging, which is actually very practical. So this guy is very useful. Uh, and when I also vlog, I do use some lights. Um, sometimes I'm going to just pop that on the camera. It's a little light by aperture. That is actually very nice and practical. You put that on the on the top of the camera and you're good to go. Now, when it comes to microphones, I have several options. Most of the time for my YouTube videos, I'm going to use a regular condenser microphone as my main mic. And I'm going to 
tried different microphones that I have here in the studio. Um, you know, for, for months I used the, the, uh, the Roswell Pro Audio uh, Delphos, which sound very good. I also use, again, uh, by uh, Roswell Pro Audio, the uh, Mini K87 that works very well. And also the Lewitt LCT640. I actually made a video on this one not too long ago. I'm gonna link it on top and down below. Um, and lately I've been using the, uh, uh, the Jay-Z Microphone V67 and that sounds very good. I also make sure that the microphone is off camera so I don't see it when I film it. Um, so I place it a bit further away. Now, the one that I'm using, like I said, is the uh, V67. And uh, the way I place it is a bit below the camera and it's facing up. And uh, this, that's the way I place it. And this way I can put it further away and uh, keep it off camera and it sound actually very good. So I kind of like this sound for my uh, YouTube videos. But I also have other options that I tried before for like uh, using a lavalier microphone. A very cool system is the one by Rode, which is a mic actually, you know, this uh, end is a mic, there's two parts. You attach one part on the camera and it's a uh, receiver and a receptor. Um, so this one is gonna receive the signal, this one is gonna send the signal. You don't need to be wired, so it's wireless, so it's very practical. You can attach this uh, straight on yourself or you can just use a lavalier microphone that you plug into this, uh, this little guy and this is actually what I use and I actually have the, like the cheapest lavalier microphone that in my opinion doesn't sound very good. Uh, and what if, I don't even know what the brand is. It's, yeah, Boya. I think I got this like for 35 or 39 bucks or something. You attach this and you just plug that into the Rode Wireless Go. This is what it's called and you're good to go. Now, the cool thing about using this type of system, uh, like the uh, the video tour, like the studio tour I did a few weeks ago, I used this, uh, this uh, type of microphone. So I was able to just walk around. I didn't need to face the camera with the mic on top. You know, I could just face anywhere uh, in the room and I always gonna get some very good audio, you know? Um, now, the downside is that the audio quality, of course, if I compare that to a condenser microphone, is not quite the same. Um, so that's the downside. I kind of, you know, it's probably the fact that the uh, I'm actually working with the cheapest microphone that I have, so I might gonna have to invest into a better uh, lavalier microphone that sound better than what I have. Uh, because right now it's not like, you know, that's why I don't reach out to to use this mic often because I don't like the sound that comes out of the uh, of this mic. But it's practical to use, you know, in some uh, kind of situations. Uh, then what I also have when uh, vlogging that I kind of like to, uh, to vlog with is this type of microphone. And this again is from Boya, very cheap microphone. It's a camera mic that you put on your camera and you plug that in straight into the camera and that's it, you know? So very practical when you vlog. It's on the cheap side, but I think it sound decent. My better option was the Rode uh, Video Mic, uh, with Video Mic Pro or something. Yeah, I think that's the one. It's the old version, um, which sound very good. The only problem, it's self-powered, but you need to, to add a battery. And uh, it doesn't turn off automatically, unfortunately, so. Um, I always forget to turn it off. So the next time I use it, uh, most of the time the battery <laughs> is gonna be dead. So that's why I don't use it a lot. But you know, this type of microphone actually works very well. Um, so again, very good when vlogging and stuff, you know, or when I shoot videos from the back of the room, I'm gonna show that to you. So this is basically what I use as far as microphone goes. So here's another look, another scene that I use in my videos where the front of the studio is the background of my video, okay, which looks actually very nice, very very colorful. I kind of like that also. In this case, what I do is very simple. I have a bigger uh, tripod to put the camera on, which is not the same as the one that I have on my desk. And for the microphone, I use the same cheap mic that I told you about earlier, the little Boya right here. But instead of putting the microphone on top of the camera, I put it on the mic stand, bring it closer. Um, I just, you know, put it higher, just above the lens, and I aim it down uh, towards my mouth. So this way I get a very good sound quality, you know? Uh, and for the lighting, I only use one light uh, for this scene, and I place it above the camera, aiming down so I can control the reflections that I get into my glasses. So this is the perfect timing to talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people 
like us. You'll find topics like marketing, freelancing, videography, illustration, music production, photography, and much more. So if you're looking to learn about video production, you want to start your own YouTube channel or produce videos for Instagram, TikTok, or you just want to learn a uh, like a musical instrument like the piano, the bass, the guitar, uh, you want to learn photography and so on. At this point, Skillshare is just an amazing option. On my side, lately I've been watching a class by Marcus Brownlee called YouTube Success Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. Marcus is an amazing YouTuber. He's like one of the most popular uh, YouTubers YouTubers out there. He has like millions of followers. It's just crazy. In his class, he shares how we film, edit, produces uh, YouTube videos. Also, how we script is uh, YouTube videos, uh, which is quite nice. Learning from the best is always the way to go. And this is something that I like a lot about Skillshare. You have high quality classes, no ads whatsoever. They have new classes on a regular basis, which is awesome. Now, the first thousands of my subscribers to click the link in the description down below will get a full month trial of Skillshare Premium. So check it out. The link is down below. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now, if we jump on the computer, what I work with to screen capture my computer screen is OBS, which is a free open source software. A bit complicated, not too user friendly, but works very well very powerful software. Uh, so this is basically the setup that I work with at the moment I am recording right now uh, the video that you are watching. Uh, so I have the microphone, I'm using the Jay-Z microphone right now. Uh, this Jay-Z microphone is connected on the first preamp of my interface, which is the Steinberg AXR4. That one goes straight into OBS. So if I right click on the settings of the first track that I have on top, I click on properties, um, I have it set up to line Steinberg AXR4 and on my uh, AXR4 software, uh, the channel that I route the signal into, uh, this is a uh, channel one, mic one, that one goes straight, let's go on this side, it goes straight into ADAT 3 and 4, those, you know, I don't have like an ADAT connected, it's an empty, um, an empty channel but this is the channel that I use to loop back straight into OBS. So loop back is activated and I send my microphone signal straight into the ADAT 3 and 4 output, which again is not connected to anything. And I just loop that signal back into the computer that goes straight on OBS. And this is how I record my, uh, my microphone. So everything has been recorded at the same time, the screen capture as well as the audio and also the audio from Cubase. Uh, so I have another track in OBS that I dedicate to the audio coming from Cubase. So this way, when I edit the video in post, I have the audio from Cubase separated from the microphone signal that I recorded in OBS. So if I go straight on Cubase, and as you can tell, I use different desktop on Windows to go from one to the other. And I have that little track pad on my left side to just swipe from one desktop to the other. So this way it's super practical when I uh, screen record Cubase in OBS. So I can switch from one, uh, from Cubase to OBS in a very fast way. Uh, so from Cubase, and you saw me, um, like some of you, if you watch my OBS video, you know which uh, plugin that I use to you know, to uh, route the audio from Cubase to OBS. And this one is called Restream. And that is the uh, little guy. I'm gonna actually link the video that I talked about this very cool plugin. It's a free plugin. And I think it only works on Windows that I forgot to mention on my last video. Uh, but basically I put that straight on the control room output okay so there is a place on the control room uh, where you can insert plugins and this is where i insert this plugin and i just you know um, send that into a local broadcast again if you want to get more details on that go watch that video um so basically with what that is going to do it's going to send the signal out of cubase straight into obs so um very simple to use and it works very well so let's just go on Cubase and listen to the audio coming out of Cubase. So you see right there, I have the, the uh, audio from Cubase. If I stop it, there you go. I don't have anything else. So this is basically what I do from OBS. If I go back to the OBS, I click on settings, um, click on output. 
and the recording because with OBS you can stream and you can also record. I usually record. I do some streaming too uh, with OBS, but I mainly use it for recording uh, my videos. So in recording, I have the recording path and this is where I select the folder on my uh, hard drive. This is where I select the folder I want to store my videos. Um, so I have like a bunch of different folders by month. Uh, let me show you what I have here. So if I go on my video hard drive, I have one folder for July, June. If I click on June, I have folders for every videos that I produce for the month of June. And this is where I put all of my footage, you know, that I record from the camera or from OBS straight into these folders. So one folder per video. Um, so I record everything from the camera on a SD card that I just transfer all the videos to that folder. And that folder is where uh, OBS uh, uh, records the videos, you know, that simple. So everything is at the same place. And then I open Adobe Premiere. That is my video editing software to edit my videos. Now Adobe Premiere is the uh, video editing software that I love to work with and that I work with all the time. So let me give you a brief look at what I have. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, now on the, uh, the way I set it that up anyways, on the bottom left, this is where I import all of my footage and I drag all the footage I need on the timeline that is on the right. So uh, I'm going to take uh, the, um, the, um, the recording from OBS, drag that over straight on the timeline. So everything that comes from OBS, all the uh, screen capturing. So basically Cubase, uh, my uh, microphone that is on the second layer or second track, and also the audio from Cubase that is on its own channel that makes my life easier. <laughs> and then what I do is to bring the recording from the camera. And of course I have some audio because I'm using the, uh, uh, the internal microphone that is on the camera itself. That doesn't sound very good, but I use it only for sync purposes. So I'm going to just select everything, right click, click on synchronized, and that's it. You know, it's going to synchronize both signals together. So my camera is going to be synced to the audio coming from my microphone that was recorded in OBS. So everything is well synced. You don't hear the audio right now, uh, but trust me, it does work very well. Uh, then what I do, I just uh, make sure I delete the audio from the camera and I only keep the one from uh, from OBS. And what I do afterwards is I nest my uh, uh, my camera footage with the audio from OBS, my uh, my microphone audio. I nest that together and this way I can just edit that on its own in another kind of timeline basically and I this is where I do all of my uh, color grading and also edit the audio where I add a bit of compression a bit of EQ uh, de-essing and for this to show you briefly I right click and I use Adobe Audition uh, to do so uh, to uh, um, to mix basically my voice so it's very practical because Audition is also an Adobe product and they work well together uh, it's going to open Audition right away and the only thing I need to do is to load my preset and the one that I have for this one is this one right here. So I have like a deesser, fab filter, and uh, the Pro Q3, a bit of EQ, and a bit of compression with Pro C. So a lot of fab filter plugins. And I finish this off with a limiter. So that's it. So this is basically my mixing chain for uh, my voice. And then once I'm done, I click on apply, and then I just save and it's gonna save itself straight into Adobe Premiere. Then I send the project to my daughter, she does the editing. Uh, so all the nice work is done by her, not by me, which is great. It saves me a lot of time and uh, she does a very good job. And once she's done, the project is gonna look like this. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, so <laughs> you get the idea. And uh, I'm just gonna go over the video, watch the full thing and just make sure that everything is okay. Uh, I'm gonna mix the audio like I just showed you at this point. And uh, I'm gonna tweak a few things, do a bit of touch-ups if I need to. And then I just export everything, upload to YouTube. And there you go. So this is my process when it comes to film my videos and edit my videos. So I hope that was helpful. You know, if some of you uh, wants to produce your own YouTube videos, uh, you can actually do so very easily. And you actually don't need all the equipment that I'm using to start up a YouTube channel or start producing your TikTok videos or Instagram uh, reels and stuff. You know, you can just use your phone if you want to, to start up and then you just upgrade as 
as you go. Uh, and this is what I did. My first YouTube videos were done with a phone. Even my first Summer Nam vlogs uh, in Nashville were done with my phone, <laughs> you know, back then. That was uh, like four or five years ago. Um, and it worked well. It served me well for a couple of years. And then I went forward and bought a camera, you know, more like a type of DSLR camera to you know get the better quality and I went from there to the point that I am right now and I'm still evolving still want to change a few things still testing a few things out also with the lighting and with uh, uh, the looks and you know the background and scenes and stuff like that it's very fun to <laughs> to do and this is uh, the part that I like uh, a lot about uh, being a youtuber and produce uh, videos is just to work on uh, filming those videos so it's a fun part I have to say so I hope you enjoyed this video if so share and and like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already until next time take care and see you